The seas are where a hundred of thousand species call home. Some of these creatures are harmless to humans, but others pose great danger to human when confronted. Among these are venomous fishes, which are linked to painful stings that can even be fatal. Any organism is considered venomous due to its ability to produce venom in specialized parts like venom glands, connected to structures such as stings that deliver venom to intended prey or organisms seen as threats. The process of delivering venom into another organism is commonly described as envenomation, which can occur through surface stings, bites, or puncture wounds. Shockingly, there are several fish species that are considered venomous, collectively known as acanthotoxic fishes. It's better you be cautious around them, or else be prepared to be struck by the lightning wrath of their venom. It's worth noting that not all anti-venom are available for treating or neutralizing the venom of some of these fish. Shall we set sail to explore the sea of various types of venomous fish that you should be aware of? Stay tuned! Also, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and feel free to leave your thoughts in the comment section. Now, stingrays are the first type of fish in this category. They are commonly found in coastal waters, where they often camouflage themselves by burying into the sand or mud. These fish have been associated with the death of the renowned Australian wildlife expert Steve Irwin, who was fatally stung in the heart by a stingray's barb in 2006, leading to severe bleeding and sudden death. In a stingray, the venomous parts include caudal appendages, a spine covered in a protective sheath, a venom gland, and the cuneiform area beneath the spine. The shapes of these venomous structures vary among different stingray species, influencing their ability to inflict stings. The way a stingray inserts its spines into the victim's body involves a defensive mechanism. Stingrays typically don't attack humans, but when disturbed, they reflexively raise their barbed tails, causing deep puncture wounds. Their spines, which have backward-facing serrated teeth, make their removal from the body challenging. This accelerates mechanical damage as well, resulting in injuries that lead to a subcutaneous mass with dermatitis and paniculitis. These injuries are often accompanied by bacterial infections, particularly from Pseudomonas and Staphylococcus species. The injuries might also lead to intense local pain and result in moderate to severe complications like nausea, vomiting, salivation, sweating, respiratory depression, muscle twitching, convulsions, swelling, and tissue death. When stung, Anticoagulants are crucial for preventing and treating thromboembolic disorders, although their effectiveness and side effects are still uncertain. So the next time you walk barefoot along the water's bottom, be cautious not to step on a stingray. The second type of fish considered venomous is the catfish. There are numerous species of catfish, which some are venomous. Their axillary venom glands are usually situated on their dorsal spine, and the spines of their two pectoral fins, which confers them with sufficient means for envenomation. Typically, the catfish's fins feature sharp retros teeth that can tear the skin of its victim, increasing the exposure and absorption of the venom. In humans, soft tissue infections resulting from catfish envenomation are rarely common in hospital emergency departments. Nonetheless, some medical infections result from primary complications associated with catfish envenomation, and their severity varies depending on the catfish species involved. When a spine penetrates a potential predator, it damages the covering around the venom gland cells, releasing venom into the wound. Depending on the species, catfish venom has been found to possess neurotoxic and hemolytic properties, possibly linked to a 15 or 10 kilo Dalton protein known as toxin PC. The effects of catfish venom include severe pain, ischemia, muscle spasms, respiratory distress, swelling, redness, paleness, and skin necrosis. The pain can spread, accompanied by local inflammation, but symptoms typically subside after about six hours without further complications. 
Complications arise when stings break in the wound, acting as foreign bodies and promoting secondary bacterial and fungal infections, which pose a serious problem. The treatment for catfish envenomation is similar to that for a stingray. Therefore, to avoid being envenomed by a catfish, it is recommended to avoid direct contact with the dorsal and pectoral spines of the fish. When handling a catfish, one should firmly grasp the fish behind the dorsal and pectoral fins. Some of the venomous catfish species include the spotted catfish, striped eel catfish, bronze catfish, thin-spined sea catfish, and giant catfish. The third category of venomous fish includes members of the Scorpionidae family, commonly known as scorpion fishes. These venomous fishes are slow-moving creatures found in tropical and temperate shallow waters, distributed widely. They tend to hide near rocks, reefs, or under plants, increasing the likelihood of human encounters. Human activities, like mishandling the fish or accidentally stepping on them, can result in the venom being released from their poisonous glands into the wound. Pain and swelling are the most noticeable symptoms of their poisoning. Ideally, the venom organs of scorpion fishes are more intricate compared to other poisonous fishes. Three different types of venom organs have been identified in three genera of these fishes, Taroa, Scorpena, and Sinansia. In the Taroa's genus, such as the lionfish, the venom organs comprise 13 dorsal spines, 3 anal spines, and 2 pelvic spines. Meanwhile, in the Scorpina genus, representing the marine ray-finned fish, there are 12 dorsal spines, 3 anal spines, and 2 pelvic spines in the venom organ. On the other hand, the Sinanseya genus has 13 dorsal spines, 3 anal spines, and two pelvic spines in the venom organ, all connected to the poison gland. In all these genera, the spines are typically covered with a sheath. While stonefishes belong to the Sinanseia genus, we will focus on scorpion fishes as a whole for now and later, discuss stonefish separately. Sounds great, right? The various species of these scorpion fishes employ different envenomation mechanisms. Ideally, a victim can either be stabbed by mishandling a fish while removing it from a net or a hook, or by accidentally stepping on the dorsal spines of a stonefish. In both cases, venom is injected into the victim's body through the spines. During the envenomation process, the glandular sheath covering the spine's ruptures due to the pressure from the spines penetrating the victim's body, and venom is injected into the wound through the anterolateral glandular groove. The venom found in scorpion fishes typically consists of an unstable protein with a molecular weight of 150,000. Fortunately, this venom can be rendered ineffective by heat, a property utilized in its treatment. However, the tissue from the spine of a lionfish, a type of genus Pteroas, has been proposed to contain one or more soluble lethal toxins. In general, the venom of scorpion fishes comprises various biologically active components, including a hyaluronidase fraction, acetylcholine, capillary permeability factor, a toxic or lethal fraction, and a pain-inducing factor. Generally, when a person is injected with venom from a scorpionidae fish, it can induce intense throbbing pain that persists for hours. The area around the wound may swell, turn red, and feel hot. Also, the secondary bacterial infections can lead to gangrene. Some of the systemic effects include cardiac failure, delirium, convulsions, and nervous disturbances. Victims may also experience primary shock with symptoms like faintness, weakness, nausea, loss of consciousness, rapid weak pulse, low blood pressure, and respiratory distress. The specific symptoms can vary depending on the species of scorpionidae fish that have stung you. The primary goals in treating scorpionidae fish poisoning involve relieving pain, countering the venom's effects, and preventing secondary infections. Thoroughly cleaning the wound to remove as much venom as possible is crucial. In scorpion fish stings, encouraging bleeding and periodically applying a bandage above the wound is recommended. Also. 
immediate application of hot water within the victim's tolerance should be followed by prolonged wound cleaning lasting over an hour. Surgical closure of the wound is discouraged and anti-tetanus agents should be administered. It's worth noting that the stonefish envenomation is more severe, requiring immediate intensive care and is treated with anti -venin, a concentrated hyperimmune horse serum that neutralizes the stonefish venom. Now, let's delve into the venomous stonefish, shall we? As mentioned earlier, stonefish belong to the scorpionfish family, specifically under the genus Sinensea. However, they are considered to be the most venomous fishes and pose a potential threat to humans. Mostly, you will encounter stonefish in calm, shallow waters, especially in muddy seabed depressions, coral islands, sheltered bays, weed-covered rocks and estuaries. They typically feed on smaller fish by attacking them with their large mouths. Once their hunting business is done, they return to their resting position. While stonefish rarely attack humans, stepping on them can lead to a dangerous encounter with their spines. When disturbed, stonefish release a white substance onto their skin. It's important to note that stonefish have 13 dorsal spines, 3 anal spines, and 2 pelvic spines, each connected to a venom gland, commonly referred to as tan bodies. The lethality and composition of stonefish venom vary among species. For example, Sinensea horrida venom contains a protein called stanostoxin, which causes extensive swelling and lower blood pressure due to its hemolytic, vasorelaxant, myotoxic, and neurotoxic properties. Another protein, trachinolysin, present in Sinensea trachinus venom, is considered a neurotoxin. Verrucotoxin protein is normally found in Sinensea verrucosa venom. Additionally, stonefish venom contains the enzyme hyaluronidase, which is more potent than that found in snake venom. This enzyme can destroy the connective tissues of its victims, leading to necrosis characterized by the death of body cells or tissues. Once the stonefish spines find their way into the victim's body, excruciating pain is experienced, intensifying with time. The point of entry becomes tender and swollen, and this swelling can spread over a larger part of the body from the entry point. Common symptoms of stonefish envenomation include lower blood pressure, breathing difficulties, swelling, fever, paralysis, muscle weakness, hallucinations, heart failure, and often death. In cases of severe systemic symptoms, anti-venom injections are typically administered to the patient. Interestingly, stonefish venom activity is affected by hot water. Generally, the venom of most marine organisms is destroyed by heat at temperatures above 50 degrees Celsius, with their lethality lost at temperatures above 43 degrees Celsius. However, caution must be taken when applying heat to the patient, as high temperatures can cause burns and necrosis. The most common stonefish species include orange-banded stingfish, alcock scorpionfish, blackfin stonefish, and reef stonefish. The fourth category of venomous fishes are toadfishes. We won't say much about toadfishes, however, it's worth noting that these fish belong to the family Batrachoididae. They are small to medium-sized marine and brackish water fishes commonly found in shoreline and shallower depths. They are characterized by a large, broad, and flattened head, featuring a sizable mouth surrounded by fleshy flaps or barbels. The operculum houses covered spines, each connected to a venom gland, and one dorsal fin with numerous soft rays, while in some species, the spines are solid, lacking venom. Typically, toadfishes exhibit a brownish body color adorned with darker spots, bars, or saddles. Their habitat preference includes hiding under rocks, coral heads, or burrowing in the sand, where they prey on crabs, sea urchins, small fishes, and shrimps. When the venomous spines of a toadfish puncture its victim, the venom induces symptoms such as swelling, intense pain, necrosis, and slow healing of the injury. 
By the way, injuries from toadfish tend to heal more slowly compared to injuries from other venomous fishes. Treatment for toadfish venom poisoning is akin to that of scorpion fishes, involving measures to neutralize the venom. The fifth category of venomous fishes includes spade fishes, also known as scats. Spade fishes belong to the family Scatophagidae and are commonly found in brackish and marine habitats, particularly in Australia, South and Southeast Asia, the Philippines, Indo-Pacific, and the Malay Archipelago. These visually striking fish are susceptible to fishing due to their widespread distribution. Unfortunately, many fishermen are unaware of their venomous nature, leading to frequent injuries during handling. The puncture wounds inflicted by spade fishes can be notably painful and tend to intensify over time. Specific species, such as the green scat, Scatophagus argus, are known to cause extremely excruciating wounds. The spines of these fish, found in dorsal, pelvic, or anal fins, depending on the species, are connected to elongated venom glands. While normally covered with a sheath, the spines become exposed when the fish is disturbed, allowing the delivery of venom into the wound. Symptoms manifest within the first 5 to 10 minutes of a puncture and include persistent pain, swelling, redness, dizziness, and a throbbing sensation extending from the point of injury. The severity of these symptoms may vary depending on the size of the fish and the amount of venom injected. Spadefish venom has been associated with a complex pattern of muscle damage. Among the common species are the green scat and the spotted scat. The sixth category of venomous fishes includes the stargazers. Stargazers, belonging to the family Uranoscopidae, are primarily bottom-dwelling inhabitants of tropical and temperate oceans, as well as brackish or freshwater habitats. These fish have a distinctive behavior of burying themselves in sand or mud, leaving only their eyes and the anterior part of their large, flattened, cuboid head exposed. Positioned near the top of their heads, the eyes contribute to their unique appearance. Stargazers possess an elongated, subcompressed body with variations in mouth shape from oblique to vertical. Their lips are often adorned with a cutaneous cirrus. While the venomous apparatus of stargazers is not extensively studied, insights from the well-examined weaver fishes, a closely related species, shed light on their venomous structures. Weaver fishes, for instance, feature two sheathed shoulder spines near the upper corner of the operculum, connected to venom glands. Exposing the sheath reveals a mass of gelatinous material where the venom is secreted. Stargazers generally have rigid and inflexible spines, a continuation of their clethrum bone. The venom is postulated to result from the breakdown products of cells through holocrine secretion or the denaturation of connective tissue fibers, causing pain to their victims punctured by the spine. A common species of stargazers is the star watcher. The seventh category of venomous fishes includes the rabbit fishes. These fish belong to the family Cyganidae and are commonly known as foxface, spinefoot, or rabbit fish. They serve as a food source in certain parts of the eastern Mediterranean and the Indo-Pacific. Typically found in shallow lagoons, estuaries, or reefs with sea grasses or mangroves, the rabbit fish inhabit tropical and subtropical coastal regions. Their diet primarily consists of sea grasses and filamentous algae, and their bodies display unique and vibrant color patterns. The venom apparatus of rabbit fishes includes four spines of the pelvic fins, seven spines of the anal fin, and 13 curved and pointed spines of the dorsal fin. Their venom glands are thick, elongated, prismatic in form, and taper at both ends, composed of glandular cells. Normally, Yellowish droplets of venom are often visible in the mature cells of their venom gland. Their venom composition includes varying quantities of amino acids such as leucine, lysine, aspartic acid, tryptophan, and proline. Additionally, chemicals like aldehyde, isothiocyanate, and methyl ether are also present. 
Rabbitfish venom has been associated with the rupture of red blood cells in both humans and animals. When rabbitfish venom is delivered into the body of its victim, it results in intense pain at the point of injury, which may lead to secondary infections over time. Treatment for envenomation involves immersing the injured part in hot water, removing and cleaning foreign bodies from the affected area, administering prophylactic antibiotics to address potential Vibrio bacterium infections, and providing a tetanus injection. It's been a lengthy video today, and you're a legend for sticking with it this far. I hope you've learned something valuable from this video. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below, so don't hesitate to share your feedback. And don't forget to check out my other videos if you want more great content. Cheers and see you in the next one.